Here's video number two on solving equations, a review for students that are behind, right? On the last video, uh, we had something like x plus 2 equals 5, and the way to get rid of the addition is to apply subtraction, right? The inverse operation. Now, what you do to one side, do to the other side. So the answer was x equals negative 3. On this video, we're talking about getting rid of uh, multiplication and division. On this next slide, we will specifically be dealing with uh, multiplication. <clears throat> and specifically, where there's multiplication. Okay, so if you look at all six of these equations, um, they all have multiplication. Now, you might be thinking, I don't see any multiplication signs. Yeah, of course not. When there's no sign between your number and your letter, that means that you're multiplying. So this really does say two times a number x equals six. And by the way, simple equations like these, most of them you might be able to figure out um, in your head, right? You could think two times a number equals six. Well, two times what equals six? Two times three equals six. We already know that the answer is three to this equation. But more importantly, I want you guys to understand how to get rid of this multiplication of two in front of the x. How? By doing the inverse of it, which is division. The inverse operation of multiplication is division. So we're going to be getting rid of multiplication with division on all these six questions. So once again, what does this really say on the first one? It says two times six, two times x equals six. So for me to get rid of this multiplication, I need to do the inverse of multiplication, the opposite of multiplication, which is division. And I'm going to use the fraction bar, which is a, a division, right? So put a division bar right there and put the two down here. And what you do to one side, you must do to the other, division of two. That way those cancel out and you end up with, keep in mind, look, the equal signs, I'm just rewriting it right here. And the right side, I have six divided by two, that's three. And on the left side, the two's canceled out. So the X is the only thing left on the left side. And I have accomplished my goal of getting X by itself on one side of the equal sign. See, there's no two anymore. There's no plus five. It's just X all by itself. X equals three. That's my answer. And again, we already knew that because two times what number equals six? Two times three equals six. Anyway, but I want you to practice. Uh, get, I, first of all, I want you to practice identifying where there's multiplication, which is right here, right? And also right there, three times X. Also right here, eight times X. Right here, three times X. Right here, negative four times X. And right here, negative 26 times x. So we're going to practice identifying multiplication, getting rid of multiplication with the inverse operation, which is division. Okay, so um, here's another detail. Uh, just because you're multiplying by 2, when you divide by 2, and, you, and what you do to one side, do to the other, divide by 2, you might not be able to actually divide these. And that's okay. That just means that you have a fraction as an answer. Okay, and that's exactly what happens on this next one. Okay, so uh, what do I have on this next one? I have 3 times x equals 2. 3 times x equals 2. So you want to get rid of the multiplication with the inverse operation, which is division. So we put a division bar, put the 3 right there. What you do to one side, do to the other. So you're going to divide by 3. Of course, 3 divided by 3 eliminates. The equal sign comes straight down. On the left side, the 3 is eliminated. All you have left is the x. And that's the goal to get x by itself on one side of the equal sign. And on the right side, 2 divided by 3, you can't do it. 2 divided by 3 can't divide 2 by 3. So what do we do? We leave it. That is a fraction. It's okay to have fractions in math, right? 2 thirds is the answer. Now, of course, whenever you do have a fraction, please try to reduce uh, the fraction. You could try to reduce either both top and bottom by 2, which it doesn't work, and then try to reduce both top and bottom by 3, which doesn't work. Obviously, two-thirds is already as simplified as it could get. It's already reduced. You can't really do anything with that. That is your answer. X equals two-thirds. Moving on to the next question, we have eight times X equals 16. How do I get rid of the multiplication of eight? I am going to do the inverse of multiplying, which is division of eight. And what you do to one side, you do to the other. Divide by eight. Okay. This does cancel out. Could I divide 16 by eight? Yes, I can. That is... 2. All right. So the answer is x equals 2. x equals sign comes down 2. Looking at this next question, it says uh, 12 equals 3 times x. x is on the right side of the equal sign this time, not on the left side. 
And it doesn't matter where the X is at, as long as you get it by itself on that side. So X is on the right side of the equal sign. So over here, I want to get it by itself. I don't want this multiplication of three. So how do I get rid of the multiplication of three? I divide by three. And what I do to one side, I do to the other, divide by three. So on the left side, I do have 12 divided by three, which I can do. The answer will be four. The equal sign comes straight down. So four equals, that cancels out, x. Now four equals x is the correct answer, but it's better to write it as x equals four instead of four equals x. Anyway, let's uh, move on to this next one. What does this next one say? It says negative four times x equals 20, okay? Now that negative belongs to the four. That's a negative four, right? And same deal, you wanna get rid of the multiplication of negative four in front of x. Now, some people might think, oh, I want to get rid of a minus four. I do a plus four. This does not say, it does not say X minus four, where you get rid of a minus four with a plus four. It doesn't say that. It says negative four times X, negative four times X. So you got to recognize what's actually happening here is multiplication. To get rid of the multiplication of negative four, you do the inverse of multiplying, which is division of that same exact value, negative four. And we do to one side, do to the other. Negative fours cancel out because a negative four divided by a negative four is a positive one. So, I mean, you could put the, the positive one right here, but that's totally pointless. That's why I just write a regular X instead of one X. Um, and then 20 divided by negative four, that is a negative five. And there's your solution. X equals negative five. Finally, last question here on these one-step uh, equations that require... Uh, division to get rid of multiplication. We have negative eight equals negative 26 times X. Okay. So where's the X at? It's clearly on the right side of the equal sign. I want to get the X by itself on the right side of the equal sign. I don't want this negative 26. Now, again, this does not say X minus 26. If it said X minus 26, then yes, I would get rid of the minus 26 by adding 26 because the opposite of subtracting 26 is adding 26. But again, it doesn't say X minus 26. It says negative 26 times X. So you get rid of the multiplication of negative 26 by dividing by negative 26. Okay. That will cancel it out, but as long as what you do to one side, do to the other, divide by over here by negative 26. And uh, like I said, this cancels out. I end up with the equal sign that comes down. I have the X all by itself, right? This X is the only thing left, so I bring that down. X equals, what does it equal? You can't divide eight by 26. Um, but we do know that a negative divided by a negative is a positive. So right off the bat, you know your answers are gonna be positive. A negative divided by a negative is a positive. And another detail is eight can't be divided by 26, but you could reduce it. How do I know this? They're both even numbers. So that means that I could at least uh, reduce both of them by two. So if I do reduce both of them by two, eight divided by two is four, 26 divided by two is 13. So there's my answer, four over 13 equals X or X equals four over 13, okay? On these examples, we have to get rid of the division with multiplication. So as you can see, it says X divided by three. I mean, you might be thinking, oh, that's a fraction. Yeah, but a fraction really is a division problem. It says X divided by three equals six. Now you may even be able to figure this out in your head, right? What number divided by three equals six? 18 divided by three equals six. That's your answer. However, you wanna show your work. Uh, you wanna show the process of the goal of getting X by itself on one side of the equal sign. So where's the X at? It's on the left side of the equal sign. Is it by itself? No, there's a divided by three. If you don't want this divided by three, you do the opposite of dividing by three, which is multiplying by three. So it's important that you put a multiplication dot and you put the three up there. Don't write the three down here. You're not multiplying three times three. The only reason you're multiplying by three is to get rid of the division of three. So you put the three up here because three divided by three, three divided by three equals one. So you could say one X, but it's pointless to put a one in front of the X. I mean, you could just erase it and just say X. And of course the equal sign comes down, but what you did to one side, you must do to the other, right? You multiplied by three, even though it just canceled out. But if you multiplied by three, 
you don't have equality anymore until you multiply by three over here. So whatever you do to one side, do to the other. Multiply by three over here as well. Six times three is 18. And now that X is by itself, you're done. X equals 18. And that makes total sense because 18 divided by three equals six. Let's move on to this one over here. It doesn't matter if the X is on the left side or the right side. You want to get it by itself. And you identify, oh, X is on the right side of the equal sign. It's over here. It's not by itself. There's a divided by four. If you don't want the divided by four, you do the opposite of dividing by four, which is multiplying by four. Again, you write it up on top. That way, you have a four on top divided by a four on the bottom, which equals one. And of course, we're talking about X's. That's all you have left, right? X and four divided by four is one. You don't need this one. You could erase it. But of course, if you multiply by four on one side, you have to multiply by four on the other side. And four times eight is 32. Bring down the equal sign. There's your answer. 32 equals X. But of course, it looks a lot nicer if you write it as X equals 32. Okay. Moving on to this one over here. It says X divided by negative five equals negative seven. You don't want this divided by negative five. So you're going to multiply by negative five, by that exact value. Okay. Not just five, right? If you multiplied by five only, then you'd still have a negative and you want to get rid of everything, including the negative. You just want X all by itself. So the way to get rid of division of negative five is to multiply by negative five. And what you do to one side, do to the other side, multiply by negative five over here. So we know that negative five and negative five cancels out. We have an X all by itself. The equal sign comes down. And we all should know that negative seven times negative five is a positive 35. There's my answer. Uh, last question here, we have a number divided by negative two equals three. You could think about it uh, mentally. You could figure this out in your mind. However, it's better to show your work. I want you to show your work here. How do you get rid of the division of a negative two? Well, to get rid of a division of negative two is to do the opposite of dividing, which is multiplying by that same exact value, negative two. And when you do to one side, you do to the other, multiply by negative two. Therefore, your answer will be a negative six equal sign cancels out x. Negative 6 equals x, but it's better to write it as x equals negative 6. All right, now what if you have both division and multiplication that you need to get rid of? On these examples, we have both. Uh, we need to get rid of multiplication and division, right? So um, there's two ways of thinking about these. The first way uh, might confuse you. Here it goes. Uh, what does this really say? It says 2 thirds times x equals 6. It's a number times x. So imagine that, a number times x, okay? Um, how do you get rid of the multiplication of a number? Well, you do the opposite of multiplying, which is dividing by that same number, but it's a fraction. And if you remember back in the first week of school or the second week of school when we added, subtracted, multiplied, divide fractions, uh, when you divide by a fraction, you really multiply by its reciprocal. So if you want to get rid of the multiplication of this fraction, you're gonna have to divide by the fraction. And again, when you divide by a fraction, you really multiply by its reciprocal. Okay. And when you do to one side, do to the other, multiply by its reciprocal. Okay. So what happens here is when you multiply, when you multiply a fraction by its reciprocal, the three and the three cancel out and the two and the two cancel out, leaving you just the X. Or you could have actually said three times two is six, two times three is six, six over six is one. So you just have a one X left over, one X left over, okay? Uh, the equal sign comes down. And over here on this side, if you remember uh, multiplying and dividing fractions, it's pretty easy. Six times three is 18. And on the bottom you have a two, one times two is two, 18 divided by two, the answer is nine, okay? So that's the fastest way of doing it. But in all reality, I don't use this method of multiplying by the reciprocal to get rid of a fraction. What I prefer is to, here's, let me rewrite it. 2 thirds x equals 6. So this is what I prefer. I like to say, well, this is 2 divided by 3. If you don't want this divided by 3, you get rid of the divided by 3 by multiplying by 3. And notice that I put the multiplication of 3 up on top, not on the bottom. It's not like you're actually multiplying 3 times 3. Uh, it would be multiplying uh, 3 times 2, right? So three times two, that's why I wrote it up on top. But instead of actually multiplying three times two, then dividing by three, it's easier to just say, oh, three on top divided by three on the bottom, that eliminates. And that was the whole purpose of multiplying by the denominator to get rid of the fraction. And what you do to one side, do to the other, okay? 
And what do we have left? We have a 2x equaling 18. And then to get rid of that multiplication of 2 in front of the x, I am going to divide by 2, giving us x equals 9. Same answer. It's just done in two steps, okay, instead of one step. Here's one step. How do you get rid of the multiplication of a number? You divide by that same number, but when you divide by a fraction, you really change it to multiplication and flip that fraction. So to get rid of this two-thirds, I multiplied by three halves, and it canceled the threes, it canceled the twos, I just have an x. Six times three is 18, 18 divided by two is nine. If this is confusing, as a matter of fact, I don't even use this method. I always just see the two-thirds, and I see a two divided by three. The way to get rid of divided by 3 is to multiply by 3. It cancels out. Rewrite what you have left, 2x. 6 times 3 is 18. And then to get rid of the multiplication of 2, you divide by 2, and you divide by 2. So the answer is x equals 9. So I prefer the second method as opposed to the first. How about you guys try this next one? Um, or let's all try this next one. It says negative 3 divided by 4. First of all, this negative, it only belongs to the numerator never the denominator, and absolutely never both of them. Do not put a negative on both of them because a negative 3 divided by negative 4 is positive. A negative divided by negative is positive. So you can't put the negative sign on both. It only belongs, I always either put it out here in the front or put it on the top. I prefer to move this negative and just make it part of the 3. So that's a negative 3 up there, okay? So I want to get rid of this uh, divided by 4. And how do I do that? I want to multiply by 4. That'll cancel it out. And what I do to one side, I do to the other. So what's my new problem? Again, we have the negative that was with the 3. You have the x. You have the equal sign. 6 times 4 is 24. To get rid of the multiplication of negative 3, we divide by negative 3. And what you do to one side, do to the other, divide by negative 3. That cancels out. You end up with x equals negative 8. Okay. Moving on to this next one. Again, you could, if you want to, get rid of the entire fraction by multiplying by the reciprocal of this fraction. But I prefer to get rid of uh, one thing at a time. I see this 4 divided by 5. I'm going to get rid of the divided by 5 by multiplying by 5. So times 5, that'll cancel it out. What I do to one side, I do to the other. Multiply the negative 8 times 5, and that will give me a negative 40. Equal sign comes down, negative 4x. Final step, you want to get rid of the multiplication of negative 4. So you're going to divide by that same exact value, negative 4. What you do to one side, do to the other side, you will end up with positive 10 equaling x. Of course, the better answer is x equals positive 10 as opposed to 10 equals x. Let's move on to this last one. And uh, this last one is an example of where you might end up with a fraction. It's okay to end up with a fraction, right? Or a decimal. Um, you have the x on the right side of the equal sign. You don't want the fraction there. Um, I'm going to get rid of one of these at a time. I'm going to get rid of divided by 7 first. How? By multiplying by 7. And what I do to one side, I do to the other side, multiply by 7. So on the left side, 7 times negative 3, that's a negative 21. Bring down the equal sign. Over here, the 7 and the 7 cancel out. I end up with a 2x. And uh, finally, I have 2 times x on the right side of my equal sign. I don't want this multiplication of 2, so I'm going to divide by 2 and divide by 2. So as you can see, 21, you can't divide it by 2. So you could leave that as an answer, negative 21 over 2. Or you could even change it to a decimal, uh, negative, uh, what is that, 10.5 equals x. All right. So the better answer would be x equals negative 10.5. Or you could just leave it x equals uh, negative 21 over 2. And you could put that negative on the 21 or in the front, but don't put it on the bottom. And definitely don't put it on both. Anyways. That's about it. We have covered getting rid of multiplication and division on this video. On the next video, we're gonna do both a combination of video one and video two, which is getting rid of multiplication, division, addition, and subtraction with their inverse operations.